Well, what an interesting dilemma has developed in the last few weeks for you business owners. The biggest issue has been solved for you as business owners, and yet it comes with some controversy. So much controversy that Google has now given it a code red. Now more on that in a moment. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what ChatGPT is, why that AI is useful, but then a tool that's even more useful than ChatGPT if you have a website and you want to rank higher. So before we go into those details, let's just first of all clarify. So what is this dilemma? Well, the dilemma is that Google wants to rank good content. But the thought for you of writing good content, if you're not a writer, well, that becomes a dilemma. And then maybe if you hire someone, he says, I need new content from you. I want useful content. Why can't you write content with great keywords in? How can I produce ranking in Google without you producing great content? And you're not a writer. So you say to him, well, I can't write content. I'm not a writer. You write the content. And there's this massive gap between the business owner, you, and those wanting to rank your website and get you traffic, which is often the SEO gurus that you hire. So what do you do and what do most people do? Well, most people can't even afford to hire someone to rank their business for them. So what they do is they do one of three things. They either, one, just hire someone to write it on their behalf, but that's expensive, so that doesn't work for most businesses. Number two, they just don't write anything at all, and they just hope that Google finds them, but how can Google find them if Google knows nothing about them because they haven't written any content? Well, number three, which I've seen many do, they just look at other websites and they copy it or they just write it in their own words, but often their grammar's poor. The writing itself isn't really written for anything other than the keywords that they're aiming for. And so in the end, you get this, this information that makes no sense, but clearly keeps repeating keywords that they're trying to rank for. And then there's also those that have been using perhaps some AI in the last few years. And you can check to see what AI content looks like. If you go to, I've got a free tool here, and I'll put the link down below, but you can just see it, it knows immediately if something's been written by a robot. So we wouldn't want to do that either, because again, that's not particularly useful, that's not great content, and that certainly isn't what your customers are looking for. So that's a dilemma. What about the controversy? Well, you know, just recently, someone's just woken up the AI robots. It's like they've suddenly been released, but you know, they've got something else added in there. They've got what appears to be a bit more common sense. In fact, they're able to even chat with you. And this is where chat GPT comes in. So whereas before AI was saying content is king and just produce lots of content, and now it's more a case of content needs to be king when it appeals to the clients and customers that you are aiming your business for. So can AI do that? Well, chat GPT has given it a good effort. And as we're gonna see in a moment, it does a very good job of this. But first of all, just worth noting that Google also is aware that to get something to appeal to humans, there are other things involved as well. It's not just about the content anymore, but we've often spoken on this channel about EAT, and that stands for expertise, authority, and trustworthiness. And Google has a manual effort to actually go out to businesses and see, do they look like they're experts? Do they have authority? Are they trustworthy? And some of the ranking now is based on human intervention, where humans are looking at websites and businesses and making decisions that help it rank. So that's why AI has never been that useful if you really want to rank well for a long-term period. And even this week, Google released a new part to that process. They added to their guidelines where they updated an additional area. What was this area? Well, they added in effect another letter E. So we've now got an E-E-A-T. So what does this new E stand for? Well, reading through the document, you can see that experience is also relevant to Google. So that indicates then that content quality can also be evaluated through the lens of understanding the extent to which the content creator has first-hand experience in the topic. So your experience when you were founded how you produce your EEAT before Google will also have an impact on your ranking. Now on this basis then, because AI is doing so well in this area, Google then released a code red this week. So what does that mean? Well, Google's aware of the impact that having this chat GPT can have. 
because people can produce articles so much quicker. But what's concerning is the information in those articles may not be accurate, or it may be just repeating things that aren't true. So that's where the warning comes in. If you look at using AI, then you need to consider actually, is the information correct? So you still need to know and understand what it is that you're writing if you use these tools. So before I introduce a new tool that kind of came across this week, I just want to consider ChatGPT and how great it is, how useful it can be as a basis. And in effect, ChatGPT is a free IA software and we know it can do all sorts of things. It's pretty mind blowing what it can do already. So if you haven't tried it out, then again, I'll put a link down below. You need to have a look at it. It is quite stunning. But is it a good thing? And you said what you thought, and you notice here the results. So the majority of you see it as a good thing. But this is now about the mindset of why is it a good thing if Google's worried about it? And if it's running the risk of just reproducing wrong information? Well, this is why it is a good thing. It's all about how you use it. If you think of a knife, a knife in the right hands is great. If you want to cut bread, if you need to spread butter, it's useful. In the wrong hands, it can be dangerous. Well, chat GPT is the same. That if you use it in the right way, it can be really useful for producing great content and for just making the whole delivery of it a lot easier and quicker for those business owners that just don't have the ability to sit there and write, because it can take so much time. Inventions are often built upon existing knowledge and technologies, we know that. And people who create new innovations do not need to worry about the underlying details beforehand of how they got there. They just build on what they know works. So I'm pretty excited about ChatGPT and also about this new tool that I've just discovered. And I'm gonna show you why you should be using them too. Let me show you why ChatGPT isn't perfect by any means and why you need to intervene with it. Because if you, for example, I've put in here, I've got a ChatGPT and ask for a simple version of say a statement like, what is Google Business Profile Optimization? And there then it gives me this fantastic detailed paragraphs of information that actually is pretty good. Most of it's pretty useful. But you know, if I then take that information that it's churned out, I need to then really put it together in perhaps some type of order to appeal to humans. I might need to read it through a couple of times and make a few changes. Why? Well, because if I put this into my free AI detector, which again, I put a link down below in the comment area, there you notice it comes out as 100% fake. So Google will recognize a lot of the information that's produced on ChatGPT. And if you're not making changes to it, or if you're not using it as a basis to build upon, that's when you're gonna to start to get problems. And Google will probably over time just then disregard anything that's been written by bots that is obvious, that's of no use. No one wants to read an article that doesn't make a lot of sense to a human. So this isn't going to be great and Google will pick this up. But if I go to this other tool I've got, and this tool is called Content at Scale. And if I put in there, for example, uh, the keyword rank higher on Google, this is now being designed by SEO experts that understand the importance of EAT. They understand the importance of keywords. They know you can't keyword stuff. They know roughly how long an article should be. Uh, they understand the fact that links within articles are powerful. They understand how to build it up and break it down into paragraphs. And so it kind of uses the idea of chat GPT, but then does it in a way that's going to work for your business if you run a website and you don't want to write any of this information. You just want to add to it. So what they've done here is I've put in rank higher on Google and then really understanding the importance of EAT, they try and make it more natural sounding, appealing to humans and then it rewrites it. And you can see then that becomes quite different, quite useful. In fact, it breaks it up. It uses three different AI writing tools, three AI engines. Uh, GPT-3 is one of them. Uh, it's also got natural language processing. It's got semantic analysis and algorithms that pull this together. And then it produces a very useful piece of content. So basically you put then these keywords, if I put this into one of these AI detectors, then you can see this 2,500 plus word blog is then absolutely fine. If I put it in there, it's basically ready to be published. Now I wouldn't publish it as it is, but it has an introduction, it has a conclusion, and yeah, just read it through, make some changes, but on the whole, this is another step forward from where ChatGPT 
GPT is. So we've got 100%, which is quite remarkable when you consider this is still being AI written. And then, as I say, just check through to make sure it makes sense. And then what's better or even greater is there's a WordPress plugin that this integrates with if you've got WordPress. Uh, if not, you can just copy and paste it in. I personally put it in manually because I like to then tinker with it. I want to put images in, I want to add videos. And as you can see here, I work with Yoast as well. So I want to do some manual tweaking as well. I want to control it. But the point is, is it's a useful tool to build upon. It's a technology that may produce even better content because I can spend more time on producing better quality content. And this does the grunt work behind it for me to start my basis off. So with a few tweaks, a few images, and there we go. Now it's ready to go. And it's done in a tenth of the time and probably a much higher quality writing than I could ever produce. I'm not a great writer, but I do need content for me to be found on search engines. But there's still one word of warning. And this may be down to why some percentages on our poll were still skeptical about all these things, particularly with ChatGPT. And I think that is the fact that excellent content should be designed for humans, not robots. And how hard it is for AI to design it for humans when they are bots themselves that have been instructed what to do. So the parts that the bots can't quite get right yet, but are trying to, is understanding how E a T works and I promised you earlier for those that get to the end of this video that I'll give you that bonus video on EAT and it's right here so head over to there now and you'll see how this hidden algorithm that's to appeal to humans is very easy to understand if you know what they're looking for